The shipping industry is looking at batteries to power ships because the regulations with regards to emissions have become more stringent over the last few years. Batteries can give fuel savings, reduce emissions and are more efficient than traditional systems. Battery installations are also stationary so they offer a significant reduction in noise and vibrations compared to traditional power systems. The batteries that we're used to using in our everyday lives are small ones like AA batteries which you might dispose of after use. Um, the type that we use in shipping are much, much larger because the power requirement is much larger as well. The size physically of a battery is directly related to how much power you get out of it and that's why we need large installations on ships. Also because it's not practical to dispose of a battery after it's drained every time, all of the batteries on board ships are secondary batteries, which are commonly known as rechargeable ones. So they're a bit like the type of battery you have on your phone, but on a larger scale. The main risks are to do with electrical failures and potential fire and explosion. That's to do with a number of factors, such as thermal runaway and hazardous gases that are released. So battery technology is evolving all the time. And the way that you deal with that is to adopt a risk-based approach to appraising these installations. So instead of making a prescriptive appraisal for a particular type of cell chemistry, which might um, change or other types might become more popular over time, we take a risk-based approach where we assess what the hazards are and then we de-risk each hazard as the battery moves through its life cycle. Right now and in the immediate future, batteries are being used as part of hybrid systems or for short journeys only. This is because of the power limitations with current chemistries. When a battery is part of a hybrid system, we will also have a conventional source of power like a diesel generator. The batteries will be charged up by the diesel generator, for instance, when the ship is steaming on a long journey, and then when you get to a coastal area, you might use the batteries instead. Because DC grids are becoming more popular, Lloyds have already got provisional rules for DC systems in place. Any system that combines DC architecture with batteries should take into account these rules as well as our guidance on battery installations. It is possible in the future that battery systems could provide the whole power for a vessel, including propulsion, but only if someone discovers a cell chemistry that is power dense enough to do that. In theory, there's no reason why it's not possible, but finding it, commercialising it and all of that will take quite a bit of research.